Assalamu alaikum and welcome back once again to Today in African History with Baba Shaka. I'm Baba Shaka and today is June 28, 2021 and we are in the final days of the self-proclaimed International African Scientists and Inventors Month. And since we're on the internet, let's take a look at the man who is generally and widely considered to be one of the fathers, if not the father of the internet. Now, I want you to meet the father of the internet. Of course, you've never heard of him because he's from Africa. And the mainstream media wouldn't want to brand the quote-unquote creator of the internet title to an African man. Philip Emeagwali, a computer scientist, is but one example. He uses his mathematical and computer expertise to develop methods of extracting more petroleum from oil fields. And it was his formula that used 6 to 5,000 separate computer processes to perform, get this, 3.1 billion calculations per second in 1989. That feat led to computer scientists comprehending the capabilities of supercomputers and the practical applications of creating a system that allowed multiple computers to communicate with each other. He's recognized as one of the fathers of the internet. Supercomputers range in price from 30 million to 100 million and beyond, and computer companies had reservations about building them for fear few agencies would make such pricey um, purchases. But and according to Mr. Emeguali, quote, at that time, the argument was, we shouldn't build computers that way because who can program them? I answered that question by successfully programming them myself. <laughs> Go on, brother, do your thing. Now, according to a story by CNN, future applications for Mr. Emil Gwali's breakthroughs was the use of data generated by massively parallel computers, include weather forecasting and the study of global warming. This was on CNN, right? Check it out. Now, it's hard to say who would in really invented the computer. There were many mathematicians and scientists who contributed to its development. Computers were sending signals to each other as early as the 1950s, but... The web owes much of its existence to Philip Emeagwali, a math whiz who came up with the formula for allowing a large number of computers to communicate all at once. Mr. Emeagwali was born to a poor family in Akure, Nigeria in 1954. Now, despite his brain for math, he had to drop out of school because his family, who had become war refugees during the Biafra War, could no longer afford to send him. But as a young man, he earned a general education certificate from the University of London and later degrees from George Washington University in Washington, D.C. and the University of Maryland in College Park, as well as a doctoral fellowship from the University of Michigan. Now, at Michigan, he participated in the scientific community's debate on how to simulate the detection of oil reservoirs using a supercomputer. Now, growing up in an oil-rich nation and understanding how oil is drilled, Brother Emeagwali decided to use this problem as the subject of his doctoral dissertation. Born an idea from a science fiction story about predicting the weather, Emeagwali decided that rather than using eight expensive supercomputers, he would employ thousands of microprocessors to do the computation. The only step left was to find eight machines and connect them. Remember, this was the 1980s. Now, through research, he found a machine called the Connection Machine at the Los Alamos National Laboratory, which had sat unused after scientists had given up on figuring out how to make it simulate nuclear explosions. The machine was designed to run 65,536 interconnected mi microprocessors. Now, in 1987, he applied for and was given permission to use the machine, and remotely from his Ann Arbor, Michigan location, he set the parameters and ran his program. Now, in addition to correctly computing the amount of oil in the simulated reservoir, the machine was able to perform 3.1 billion calculation per second. 3.1 billion calculations per second. Man, I, my brain can't even do 1.1 per second. How about yours? But, all right. The crux of the discovery was that Mr. Emeguali had programmed each of the microprocessors 
to talk to six neighboring microprocessors at the same time. The success of this record-breaking experiment meant that there was now a practical and inexpensive way to use machines like this to speak to each other all over the world. And within a few years, the oil industry had seized upon the idea, then called the Hyperball International Network, creating a virtual worldwide web of ultra-fast digital communication. The discovery earned him the Institute of Electronics and Electrical Engineers Gordon Bell Prize in 1989, and this is considered to be the Nobel Prize of Computing, and he was later hailed as one of the fathers of the internet. Now, since then, he has won more than 100 prizes for his work, and Apple Computer had used his microprocessor technology in their Power Mac G4 model and others. Now, according to Brother Magwali, says, the internet as we know it today did not cross my mind. Right, that's what he said. He said, I was hypothizing, hypothizing, and that's a big word for me, hypothizing a planet a, or a planetary sized supercomputer. And broadly speaking, my focus was on how the present creates the future and how an image of the future inspires the present. That's his words. And those words appeared in Time magazine. So every time that you go on the internet, say thank you to Philip Emeagwali for making your life and mine a little bit more convenient, all right? Now, allow me to say thank you to all of you who have su subscribed to this channel. We are very appreciative of your support. Now, to those of you who have not yet subscribed, we invite you to go in and hit that subscribe button just below the screen. Please like and leave a comment down in the comment section below. But most importantly, please share, especially with the young amongst us, because as you and I both know, this material is not taught in our schools. So until tomorrow, inshallah, this is Baba Shaka with Today in African History. Masalam.